Well, hey everyone, how are you doing today? And Anyanga Seo Sewa, yeah. Um, what are we doing? Well, this is a bit of a unique start to my videos. Um, today we are going to be adding some mud to our tank. This guy right here, um, this guy that we've been working on. I'm finally at the stage where it's time to do some weathering. This one of my plates falls off. Um, we're going to add some mud and well I want to make it realistic so I want to have some mud accumulation up on the inside here I don't want to go crazy I'm not going to make this thing like a total muddy tank kind of thing like it's literally just been through the mud what I'm going for here is dried mud that's been just been on there caked on for a long time and most of it is flaked off and chipped off and stuff but some of the stuff obviously will accumulate up in here in behind the wheels and everything and in behind our armor plates these guys here which this guy just fell off but it goes right here so what I want to do today is start making the mud okay so I'm gonna put a little bit in here I'm gonna be careful not to get any on the axles because I still have to put the wheels on and I am gonna be putting a little bit on the wheels you can see my little set of wheels here going to have a little bit on there I don't want to do again not too much I just want to do a little bit on the wheels just where it would accumulate in the edges and stuff like that and the little spots here or there and all that kind of stuff and I'm going to do a little bit on the back side of these plates where the mud would splash a little bit as the truck is a truck as a track is going and obviously a little bit up the back here where it would come off of the tracks and splash up up the back here a little bit and of course well they're not going to hose these things off and clean them so it's going to be a little bit dirty it's going to add to the realism that this thing might have been actually rolling around at one point at the same time we're going to do it on the tracks but i don't want to do a whole lot on the tracks because that will take away from all the detail that you see and of course it would take away from all the the rusty color that I've got going on here on the tracks right so again only a little bit and especially in the middle here where it would accumulate because on the sides it would tend to flake and chip off and and stuff like that so that's what we're gonna do so how do we make the mud what do we do to make the mud well I like to use this product by VMS um, they have their spot-on pigments you can get various colors and stuff like that I like this one this is a uh, brown earth and I'll open it up here as you can see I've used it pr prior um, that's this color here just a you know medium brownish color this one is the textured one so that gives you that clumpy dirt kind of texture okay and then what we do is we use our alkyd binder okay this stuff um, actually binds it together so it will stick okay and they claim on their website that you can play around with this stuff while it's on there for up to nine hours before it finally hardens and becomes permanent and if you put too much on and you want to clean it up and f make it finesse a little bit you use what they have called their universal weathering carrier it's basically just a thinner it's pretty much all it is I think it even smells like some kind of thinner yeah it smells like some kind of I don't know alcohol almost something like that but yeah so that's what we're gonna do so I've got my brush here ready I've got the parts all laid out but what I want to do is I want to lay down a piece of paper towel here because well mud is messy you know dirt is dirty <laughs> pretty much right <clears throat> it's just the way it is okay so, I'm going to choose one of my cleaner little things here, and we're going to put some up. You can just use my brush wherever it wound up underneath here. There we go. Scoop out how much you need. You don't need a lot, and you can always add to it if you need to. You can, if you got made it too thick, you can add more of the binder. If you make it too thin, you can add more powder. It's really it's all up to you okay so we take our alkyd binders 
and we put some drops here. Just a second. <laughs> this one hasn't been opened yet. I have two. There we go. <laughs> mark on this one so I know that it's the one I've opened. One. One. There we go. Okay. And we'll see how our mix goes here. The idea is to make mud. I've made it a little too runny. I put too much in there. Alright, this is just almost like a paste and I don't want that. Add a little more. Let's try two scoops. Two scoops was too much because now I've got just a big dry mess. It's also thick and clumpy, which is what I'm going for. That's better. And the nice thing is, all you do is just slather it all over the thing. Because the main thing with this stuff is that you, you finesse it by taking it off. You don't just put it on super fine and nice and neat. You can take it off. But at the same time, I don't want to do too much. I just want to do a little bit to add to that muddy kind of texture, okay? Just like this. And it's got that muddy texture on it, and that's perfect. So it's thick, it's, it's thick like mud, like I'm literally spreading wet dirt on it. it. It's gritty and has that texture, and that's just exactly what I want. And yes, it is messy, and this is why I've got my paper towel here. Again, I don't want to go too heavy on it because I don't want to take away from the detail on here. Okay? But, I think with this thing with running, it's real running gear, everything like that, mud would accumulate in some spots. Maybe not so much in others. Mud would definitely accumulate on the gear, but it wouldn't clump up so much because the gear is moving as the suspension goes, right? So, keep that in mind for your realism. I also don't want it to interfere with the actual wheels because that can really be a pain also. Again, it's all about, I want it to look kind of real, okay? And that's kind of where I'm at right now, okay? This is kind of a big brown mess. Now what I want to do is I want to put the plates on the side so that I can put it on there and kind of flake it on and whatever in a somewhat realistic pattern. So this is the back. So what I'm going to do is I start with the front plate and I'm going to work my way back with the plates. This is the back one. So I have them all in a specific pattern on how where they were. This is the other side. Uh, this one goes here. This one, I believe, is the front here. Nope, that's the other side. Yep. 
the other side. Um, other side, I believe. And I think. This one goes here, and same with this one. It's the other side. I got too many for one side. I don't think that one's for this. So I need to find this one. Where did you go? It's not you, is it? If it is, I did it backwards. No. And it's you. It can't be you. You don't match. You. You. All right. Yes. There's one. Okay. And then we go. Where are you? Where'd you go? I'm missing this guy. Must be this one. There we go. And then we are red. And then this guy. Like that. And then this guy. Which is wrong. It's this guy. There we go. So I'm going to kind of hold these on a little bit while I put some mud on them. I don't want to do a lot, like I said, um, just kind of accumulating a little bit where the mud would get flicked and f flicked on and accumulate on there as the treads are moving. I don't, I think there would be less on the front ones than there would be on the back. But at the same time, there would still be some. some mud on there on the inside of it. and that pretty much is gonna f I think maybe some would flick up a little further up on this and up there maybe even on as high as that yeah I think so Again, not too much, just enough to give it a bit of realism that mud actually has been flung up on this thing and they haven't bothered to clean it off. That's the main thing. Okay, so with that done, I'm gonna take these off. I could just leave them and let it dry like that. It's not really gonna affect very much. pretty much. I'm happy with the amount of mud that's on there. It looks pretty good. There's not a huge amount. It's just a little bit, right? And it's not going to interfere with the way the wheels go on or anything like that. So I think I'm happy with that and I can leave that like this just as it is. We'll see how much these guys want to fall off. See? Just like that. So I'll put them like that. So you can see that I haven't put a whole lot. It's just a little bit in there, right? Just a little bit. Just 
is because, you know, it didn't seem right to leave these like that and not have any mud on them when there's actually mud in there, right? Realistically, that's not how they'd be. And I can still add to it a little bit if I want to, a little bit of accumulation like on the edges, right? That kind of thing. And give it that just a little bit of a more realistic kind of thing like that. Because this is sort of drying out on me. Just like that. And that's not going to interfere with anything. It's just the way it is. Okay. But I'm kind of running out, so I need more. I need to do more for the other side. So grab a couple more scoops. A couple more drops. Mix ourselves up some mud. I think I need a few more drops. Yep. And that looks to be about the texture I want. Okay, let's work on the other side. Same thing. Slather it on there nice and generously, getting in those corners. If you want to get mud accumulation in the direction that you think it might go, you can actually use the brush to paint in that particular direction of where the mud is. Just getting it in all around the gear here. I get the odd clump here or there. That's fine, I'm going to leave it. It's all about how much you want to put on and how much you want to leave, right? Um, if you want it super muddy, you can just leave it. Slather it on real thick and put it everywhere and not clean any of it off. If that's the look you're going for, right? I don't necessarily want it that bad. Um, I just want a little bit. Okay, there's that. So now we're going to do the plates on this side. Starting with our front one, which I believe is this one. No, that's going to be... It should be the front one. This one should be the front one. <laughs> Maybe I screwed up in my painting. I'm not sure. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is definitely my rear. So this is my front. There we go. 
So my front, I'm going to have to rethink my paint job. Because it seems... I wasn't paying attention when I painted it. Okay, we got these done on this side. A little bit of mud on the inside. I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't do the red over here on this, but that's okay. It can look like it's an add-on piece. thing we need to do are the wheels. So we need a little more mud because we now have this done on the under underside on both sides, right? Okay, so see there? And I got it splattered up the back. I'll show you rather than showing you upside down. Got the mud splattering up the back here on both edges where it would come off the tracks and get splattered up. It could even in theory be on top here depending on how much how fast they're going as they go through the mud, right? But we put that aside and we gotta get a little more here because we got wheels to do. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All kind of binders. Pace. Now on the wheels, I don't mind it being a little bit thinner. The wheels are actually moving and they're going to fling mud off a lot more and you're not really going to have chunks of mud stuck to them very much. So it's okay if this is a little thinner. Still need a couple more drops. One more. <clears throat> Alright. Mix them up. Okay. The brush just gets so loaded. <laughs> it doesn't look like I've really made anything because it's all in the brush. Okay, so in the wheels, again, I don't want to do a whole lot. I'm just going to do a little bit around the edges here. Yeah. And of course, as I say it, I'm not really getting any on the edge, but that's okay. I want some accumulation, but not a whole lot. And I'm just going to do kind of like that. Okay. And I'll do that on all of them. Some maybe get a little bit more than the others. take away from the detail of all the bolts and everything too much. And of course, 
course, realizing maybe I should have worn gloves because now I'm going to get them all, get my fingers really muddy. Hindsight being 2020, right? really eager to get some mud on it. There we go. So there's our singulars and we got our dual wheels. Now the dual wheels <coughs> I kind of tempted to go in between the two, but at the same time, I don't know how realistic that's going to be. So trying to imagine it's rolling on the tracks, yeah, it would get muddy. Um, maybe just kind of do a little bit of a sweep through there like that maybe kind of might be all right now, of course if you wind up accidentally putting too much on you put on like way more than you really intended that's what the universal carrier is all about and that stuff is the thinner that cleans this stuff off almost cleaning the brush off on the edge just to add those little bit of chunks not that you guys can really tell but yeah the end result is basically an actual chunky muddy wheel I'm not bothering with the inside of it because it's never going to be seen. Well, actually it is going to be seen. Now that I think about it, just putting it on here, <clears throat> it's going to be seen because this is going to go on here like this. And now you see that side. If you ever turn the tank over, you're going to see that on the inside. So I got to do my due diligence and add mud to the inside of the wheel too. do our last two here this one's now finished two more to go here and I'm gonna have to mix up some more mud because I've run out here
Okay, you're done. Did I do the back side? Yes, I did. Okay, I got three done. And the wheel done. One done. I'm trying to make this work with the amount of mud I have left. I think I'm going to wind up having to mix up some more. Yeah, because I'm pretty much run out here. So, but I don't need that much more. I haven't got that many wheels to do. So, just one scoop. My brush is getting killed. But that's why you buy some cheap brushes for doing stuff like this. Brushes that you don't mind sacrificing. See, I've got bristles falling out and everything on this thing. <laughs> it's just getting destroyed. But that's okay. I don't want to do that one. Let's do this one. these guys because they're going to get seen as well. The beauty of this stuff is because it actually has texture, it doesn't just look like, oh, you painted the wheels brown, right? It actually has a dirt texture to it. So you can see that it actually looks like real dirt on this thing in all these spots. Okay, so got a couple more wheels. I got the front cogs. Definitely want to have some on the inside here. So I might as well start with the middle. And I can do a little bit on the back here. And 
little bit on the front. Not crazy, just more discoloration than anything. So my brush is deteriorating on me. There we go. And finally we got our little idler wheels in the back. These are probably, my guess would be the muddiest ones, or have the most accumulation on them. I don't know for sure. I've never seen a tank in real life, but I would imagine so. I have bristles falling out of this poor brush all over the place. brush this thing is dead <laughs> okay that's it so my brush has died on me um, but that's all right there's nothing wrong with that I just have extra little bristles everywhere my fingers are disgusting looking but that's okay I've been playing in the mud right that's all it is so we want to clean this up we want to refine it a little bit right that's kind of the point of this. The whole point of this is now to clean it up as much as you want. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy with it. I'm happy with the amount that I got on there. I don't really think I need to clean it up anymore. Because I've kind of been a little careful on, on cleaning it. But one last final part is my tracks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just dump this out, get rid of all my little bristles in here. I have to mix up a little more because I need to put some on the tracks. My poor brush is dying very badly. From all of the scraping that it's gone through. Okay, I've got a pretty good paste here now. It's almost a little too pasty. My bristles are falling out at an alarming rate, so I'm going to have to throw this brush out now. I'm going to grab another one of my brushes and kind of get some of the get rid of the bristles. Okay, so I got a good paste going on here. So this part is a, this is part of the top tracks, and so I just want to dab it a little bit in some spots. I don't want a whole lot because, again, I don't want to take away, oops, from the detail. Just kind of dabbing it in between the links. So there's going to be a little bit of accumulation in some of some spots, but not everywhere. And again, I'm kind of just going in the middle.
can kind of work it in the, into the different treads if you want all that good stuff and you can really get some there I'm gonna leave it got the odd chunk here or there I'm gonna leave it in there because that's I think it's realistic there's gonna be a few that are gonna have some chunks in it Of course, the uh, temptation is to go hard on there and really dig it in there, but I got to be a little bit careful because I don't want to break my links apart. And so there we go. So there's one. Now it's not done by any means. There we go, one. And I got three more to do. Which means I need a lot more of this stuff. from the other brush this again is one of the other top side kind of using the edge of the brush to kind of scrape along the tops of the, the tracks and then using the bristles to dig it down in, inside in between them. And of course later on I got to paint the tops of the tracks where it would come in contact with the ground because those would be kind of shiny still. Shiny and new looking. As they, con as they contact the ground constantly and get constantly cleaned. Again, the beauty of this stuff is if you wind up putting too much on and you don't like it, you can always use the out, use the universal weathering carrier and you can clean it all off. You get according to the website, you got nine hours to do that. Okay, so now we have our bottom of the tracks. These sit like this, this is gonna be the bottom.
it may look like I'm putting it everywhere, I'm actually really just focusing in the middle. I'm not really doing too much on the sides. Because I don't want any accumulation on the sides. In the middle, accumulation is fine. I want to fill some gaps here and there, or some holes where the mud maybe just got stuck and has never been loosened, never came out, that's, that's fine. some tracks they look maybe a little too clean well just add a little more mud it's pretty simple there we go okay one more now should I do the top not really because the top is in constant contact with the wheels and constantly getting cleaned right so I'm not going to be bothering on that edge okay so I've got one more to do here Need a bristle. All right, and that's it. That's done. Got a big chunk there. I want to take out. We're done, and that's it. So that's it for adding mud. Totally done. Now this stuff, once it's dried and it's cured and everything like that, you can actually paint it if you want to. But that's where we're going to end it for the mud for now. And in a little bit, once this is dried, of course, we're going to fast forward about nine hours or so, right? Something like that. We're going to fast forward and uh, we're going to continue with actually some of the assembly. And we're going to finish that off. So. Until then, we'll see you soon. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my video. And um, yeah, welcome back. We're continuing on with the build of this little guy right here. And that would be the 135th scale Panther tank by May. As you can see here by this little guy on my desk, we're nearing completion. We're almost done. Spent the time to put the tracks on. We've got all the running gear on. Put all the mud on there last time. And um, it's now assembled. Did some highlights of the metal parts that are basically would be contacting the ground all the time. Getting them all shined up and nice and keeping them new looking. And that's why they're all nice and silver like that. Okay, that's realistic. That's real. I just finished putting on our armor plates on the side here, on the one side, and we're going to continue on that right now on the other side. So, because I've just freshly put them on there, I don't want to lay this thing right down on its side, so I kind of have to hold it like this. Now, <clears throat> one thing I have noticed is these little pegs that they, that they sit on have been having a tendency to fall down and, and not really want to stay put so I have to make sure they are lined up first they are a little delicate they're small they're tiny little things right so what I'm using is the CA glue because these plates are metal they're not plastic so I have to use a CA glue to fix them in place okay and pardon me if the planes are taken off because well the wind is blowing that way so the planes are taken off that way and yeah so not gonna be very friendly to me today but that's okay we'll get through this we will get through this so just add a little bit of glue here and a little bit there from this side it comes forward a little bit so I'm going to put a little bit on here too 
and it might touch the track. So if it does, I want to have it secured. Although they do stick out pretty good, I don't think it really is going to touch the track. But it might. It might. Which one is my front one? This one. Just like that. Okay, so there's our first one. I guess I can let it sit. Nah, I don't want it to. Put something under this back here. There. Okay. Next piece. I haven't uh, determined which ones are which yet here. I think that's number two. Like this. And then this would be number three. Yep. Okay. And then because these overlap, I'm going to put a little bit on the back side of this one. So that as it comes in contact, it helps keep it nice and nice and firm, just like that. Next this guy. And basically continue on like this until they're all on. I got a little bit of mud I got to clean off here. Third one on, go to number four. Which one's number four? This one, I believe. Yes. more to go. And there we have it. Our plates are on. Okay. Now the one thing I do need to do, do need to do, I do need to do, is put on the little fender covers. Okay. Now you see I have them already placed on this side, and that's these little guys along here. Okay. Along this edge. Okay. They look nice and clean compared to the rest of them because I haven't done any weathering on them yet at all. And I didn't have them installed when I was doing the camouflage, so I need to actually continue the camouflage onto them to actually keep it kind of realistic looking, right? So these ones, I had taken them all off on this side. They all came off, but on this side we still, we, two remained, so they actually are painted, okay? 
So I only have a few to put on the front here, and that's perfectly fine. So we're going to start with, they go in an alternate pattern. We've got a really long one that goes at the front, okay? And then we go short, long, short, long, short, like that, that kind of thing. So all I have to do is add more glue. All I gotta do is add more glue, but I got some dirt here. There we go. Make sure that edge is clean for it to go on. Okay, so we're starting with a short one. Let me grab my tweezers. This guy goes right here. Just like that. Just like that. Okay, next. Admit, I used some of I used the techniques for adding rust along the edges of these panels um, that I learned from Night Shift, and you know, as realistic as he makes it look um, in his videos, even my not so perfect way. It looks really good and the rust looks pretty realistic. There's another one. And we've got one more to put and that's going to go on the front here. This is a nice big long one. Now in the instructions, it does tell you to put the fenders on before you put these plates. But as I've discovered, if you try to do that, and you don't have them at the perfect angle, then you can't put the plates on. So you have to first have them at the perfect angle. So. As I've discovered, this is a much better way. You put the plates on first and then put your fenders on. <clears throat> and that was a much easier process than what I was trying to do earlier. Because if you do it without the fenders on... Oh hey! <clears throat> How's it going Vivid? Um, <clears throat> trying to do it without the fenders on you only have the one edge to glue but now with the fenders on it's gluing on this edge that touches the tank and as it comes over the fender or the plate right so that's a much easier thing it's much easier oh yeah let's drop it sure okay 
So those are on. Those are finally done. And we got our, t our tracks all weathered and everything, and it's looking pretty cool and looking nice and realistic. So I'm going to grab my paint, and I'm going to touch up some of the paint on here and continue my camouflage patterns on the sides. So I need to rotate this facing me. Let's move my glue out of my way. Making a tank, yes. Um, right up here in this little section, you can see that's what I'm building there. Here, I'll put the turret on, you can see. There you go. Tank. <laughs> Yes, I enjoy streaming. Okay, so as I said, I just need to touch up a little bit where the camouflage would continue. Like this. You love watching people being happy. Well, that's good. That's very nice. Section's done. Why do good people always get bad luck? Well, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. The same could be asked why do bad people always get good luck? kind of life, right? Um, it's the way it is. Unfortunately, there is evil in this world, and that's kind of the way it is. done with our green green part's done. I've always been generous, kind, and helpful to others, but it's getting harder every day. Have you met anyone like me? Um, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I've met someone like you. <laughs> it's, um, life can be hard, you know? You can be, try and do everything nice and try and do everything perfect and still get bit in the butt, right? That's kind of the way life is. 
How old are you, Vivid? Just out of curiosity. tell you this much a lot of the problems that you're facing right now 10 years from now they're gonna seem like they were nothing I'll give you that piece of advice it may seem like it's really terrible right now and it might even be going through things that seem like it's the end of the world but I'll tell you this much the problems that you're facing right now 10 years from now they're gonna seem like wow I was really worried for nothing. Trust me. Okay, so a couple little places to touch up on the red. I've got this one here and here and there. Three spots. Not too much. I kind of contemplated putting a little bit of red here, but I don't think I will. Maybe I'll just do it a little touch. Well, you're welcome, Vivid. I hope uh, I hope I can help you. Trust me, it gets better. That one. That one. One more to go. Maybe one and a half. We'll see how I feel on this front one here. That works for me just like that. I'm going to touch this one up just a little. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now I do need to clean my brush, which means I need to run to the sink here. Um, to all the people I have talked to, they've never said it gets better. I'm happy you did. Well, you know what, Vivid? They really should have because anybody who knows anything knows. It does get better. It does get easier. I'm not saying you're not going to have problems later on. Don't take me wrong there because life is full of problems. But I'm just saying that the ones you're facing now in the future will seem like you'll think to yourself, what was I worried about? I'll be back in a sec. I need to clean my brush. Nice and clean. Done. Another thing I'll say, Vivid. Um, I don't know who wrote this. I can't remember now. But 
they said something like this as they got to the end of their life they said something like 90% of the things that I worried about in life never happened and that's really something to think about something to consider the things that we worry about constantly a lot of times they're not worth worrying about okay so next step we got a couple of cables we need to put on here Wow, they look super bright in comparison to uh, the model. So I will have to do some weathering on those for sure. Okay. A couple of little pins that go in the back. sorry vivid I'm sorry that I'm the only good thing that happened today you know what else happened today you woke up and you're breathing those are two other good things so just think of that okay so one cable goes here and I already have a camouflage to go green but it goes this is not the right one so it goes on this side um, so this side we have and thank you that you love my tank <laughs> I appreciate that this one's gonna go on this side here okay so there's a little pin one of these pins that go through here I don't know if they actually go through or if they just attach let's see there are holes so this should be fun this should be lots of fun almost fits, it kind of fits. It's a tight fit, I'll give it that. And then I run into a snag. So, We're in. Perfect. Okay, glue time. Glue that pin in so we don't fall out. On this side, it hooks up onto the front here like that. So I add some glue there so we don't fall off. touch up the paint on those. How old am I? I am old enough to be your dad. <laughs> I'll say that. I'm old enough to be your dad. Actually, you're 16. If I go 36. Almost old enough to be your grandfather. Maybe not quite, but close. Born in 72, I was. Oh, 
Well, that pin went in perfect. No problem at all. And then we've got this one. This one I painted green to match the camouflage up here. And it looks like I didn't quite cut the cable long enough. Damn. I am a millimeter short on our cable here. So, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do with you? I can keep pulling on it. Until the cable comes out and the glue might finally come loose. I'm going to do that. That works for me. Hi, right, Will the Kit. Cam looks very good. Thank you very much. just finally getting to the finishing stages on this guy where all the assembly is finished and it's just a matter of finishing up on the weathering doing some dust effects and all that fun stuff involved with that We're almost finished got a little cables on. I need to weather those because that doesn't look right. Um, I want to add a little bit of some rust. It's not rust. Well, they call it rust streaks, but it's basically just a dark brown kind of wash. And uh, just to help these look a little not so new and shiny. It's because it's just a little too much on the hull here. Just a little too much. I don't want them standing out like a sore thumb. It's really kind of ridiculous. That looks better. Much better. All right. So now we need to add some dust to this thing. Now I've got the dust effects by AK Interactive and we can, I could just slather the whole thing with it and look, make the thing look totally dusty like it's just been sitting there for a long time. But I don't really want to go for that kind of a look. I kind of want just some streaks, right? And so you can refine it. The nice thing about this stuff is if you do put on too much or you doesn't look realistic enough you just take some thinner and you streak it and you're good to go now one thing to note I have covered this in a flat clear coat so this stuff won't actually eat into the the color of the paint right and that's the main thing so just doing a few little streaks now these are gonna be big streaks and they're gonna look kind of obnoxious at first um, especially because of the size of the brush I'm using. But that's all right because I'm going to refine it as I blend it in a little bit later.
okay so as you can see on this camera it looks really awful it doesn't look realistic at all right it doesn't look realistic at all just these big white streaks but that's that's perfectly fine now for up here we can do things like this and almost use it as a wash as a panel liner. okay because we're going to be blending it in later do like the odd little spots here and there like this because we're blending okay that's what we're going to be doing now how do we blend we're going to take some thinner do you live near an airport yes Yes, the planes are taken off in that direction that you guys can hear them. I apologize for that, but really, it sucks. But that's kind of the way it is. So, I just dip my brush in the thinner. And dry it off a little bit. And just kind of stipple this a little bit. the whole point of this it's kind of a dust dusty look and that's the whole point so just kind of blending it all in yes thank you airplanes we know it's time to take off it's also around uh, 20 to 9 in the morning here where I am in Canada on the west coast so that doesn't help since you know all the airplanes I like to take off around the same time every day you know as it gets into the evening they kind of stop flying there's not as many flights Enjoying how it's kind of gone into the panel lines on this area so you can just kind of flood it with the thinner and really dilute it to get it out of those lines and I can actually add a dark panel line too if I want to once this is dried the main point is just to get that almost like a, like a little white fog on there right and if I don't like it if it's starting to, if it doesn't look realistic I can always just add more thinner just like that and dilute it any, even more, spread it around. You got lots of time with this stuff. Um, probably a good couple of hours before it really settles down and hardens up. But even still, you use this same thinner and it, uh, it blends nicely. streaks I want, I'm actually just going to pull them down with the thinner even more.
Oh, thanks, Vivid. Yeah, when uh, The Witcher came out and I saw this shirt, I was like, wow, I gotta have that. <laughs> Again, all I'm doing is just pulling these streaks down, right down to the bottom. Just for a more realistic look. And you can do more, you can do less. It's really all the kind of look you're going for. If uh, you feel that your your tank should be super dusty, if it's not dusty enough, that kind of thing. So here's what the front looks like now. As you can see, I've refined that much more. And of course, it's all glossy because of the because uh, of the thinner. So now. We should put some on the sides because, well, that would happen on the sides too. All right, Ray, I'll call you Ray. Now, I think probably where each attachment point is probably going to be a nice realistic spot where things would... come down. But of course, life is random. So it makes sense that there would be other spots as well. I only want a few. I don't need a whole lot. I think that will be good enough. So we'll add some to this side too. Here, here. There we go. Okay. And I shouldn't forget to the back. For realistic purposes, I should put some here, a couple here on the back too. That should be good enough. Okay. Oh, well, we'll do that. Got to do the, uh, got to do the turret too. Can't forget about the turret. The turret's part of the tank. So I'm gonna clean this off. Get some of the white off there. Okay, let's move over to this side. Oh, they're sat in the tank, really. Wow. Is he, I'm assuming he's a veteran then. Just kind of refining my streaks a little bit. I don't want them too wide. It doesn't look realistic then if they're too wide. There we go. Kind of hard to see on the camera, especially when it's still wet. 
You see on the front here, I got a little too much, I think. So I want to refine this a little bit. Clean it up. It's basically just making the front look totally white, and I don't like that. see how that looks when it dries okay chipping some later um, I'm actually building this for a buddy of mine and he likes a cleaner look so I've done I've done some chipping and rust along the, these panels on the side but the rest of the tank is basically going to be pretty clean I'm not going for a totally rusted out look just a little bit like this thing has seen some uh, thinking about the story of this particular tank it's seen some service it's it's um, it's definitely been in use but not for too long right that kind of thing thinking about sort of like that is my thoughts Finally, we'll streak down these back ones. I like to think of these, uh, it's actually made of plastic. I kind of like to think of these streaks as the preliminary to where rust will accumulate. Where eventually you're going to get rust coming down. But because it's still fresh and new, it's, it's just a, a dusty or a, a white streak. I think we're at a point where it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll let the, let the thinner dry on this a little bit, and I'll grab the turret, and we'll start working on the turret. You can't tell? <laughs> you can't tell that it's plastic? Well, then uh, I've done a good job. <laughs> the whole idea is to make it look like it's made out of metal or something, right? That's the whole idea. The ground colors is from Tamiya. I have... So the... The beige and the green and are Tamiya's. That's these two here. Tamiya's, uh, this one is desert yellow. That's what this started out as. And the green started out as light green, but I added some black to it so that it's come out, and that's the color you've seen on there now. So it comes out, it's, really, it's close to an olive drab color, right? But not quite. And then the reddish color is by Vallejo, and that is the German red brown color. And that's what that is. So I use a combination of Tamiya and Vallejo for the colors. Okay, let's streak up our turret. there'd be a lot of streaks and then go like this on the front of the turret definitely will be some streaks in the back here I think that should be good enough for my little dots. <clears throat> the number of the green. The green, well, it's X15. But as I said, I uh, I added some black to it to make it darker. Um, because the instructions called, 
the, the instructions that Meng gives um, tells you the AK interactive colors, their numbers, but um, in converting it to Tamiya because my local hobby stores don't have AK paints, um, only the washes and stuff. Um, so I had to convert it, just uh, Google searching the conversion to get the Tamiya equivalent. And uh, that's what it came up with, this super lime freaking green, which doesn't match at all. So I bought it and then I just darkened it to make it more like an olive drab to match the colors. What other models have I worked on? Well, if you do a quick search and uh, check out my Instagram, you'll find out. Um, I post pictures on my Instagram of all the models I've built. Also my YouTube channel, Duplicitous29. Um, you can watch other videos um, of all the stuff that I've done. I've done Model F-15s and uh, other tanks, Terminator tank and uh, the what you call it, the Korean K2 Panther tank. Um, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, German, the battleship, the Tirpitz, it was uh, a recent one. I also do Gundam kits. Because Gundams are a whole unique thing. They're really different from a normal model, which makes them unique and cool. <clears throat> oh yeah, thank you. <clears throat> oh yeah, the um The battleship Yamato, space battleship Yamato uh, from Star Blazers, or well, depending on where you're from. When I was a kid, uh, in North America, the show was called Star Blazers. In Japan, of course, it was space battleship Yamato. here I'm just kind of stippling it a little bit or on the front of the turret I guess the whole thing is called the turret <clears throat> yeah when I was a kid the uh, my favorite show was uh, Star Blazers so I kind of had to do the best I could on that model. <clears throat> okay, so I just need to refine my streaking here. on this since October 16th um, yeah something like that because I don't get a lot of time during the week to be able to work on these things very much so I basically especially for doing it live I don't get a lot of time so um, I basically, my usual thing is to get about an hour on a video, roughly, to to do a live show or a live section, and uh, then I'll do other things during the week, just spending 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, that kind of thing, to 
kind of do little details that would be boring to watch, right? Oh, you went to my channel? Oh, thank you. You should hit the like and subscribe on my videos. <laughs> that would be appreciated. Okay, I think I've got the streaking on the turret done good enough. I think it's just a matter now of clear coat and we're done. That's what it's looking like. You already did? Oh, awesome. Thank you. I think we're just about done here, guys. The last step is clear coat. Now, it's not going to be a glossy clear coat. It's going to be a flat clear, but it's basically done. That's it. We're finished. Clear coat, and then I put this on for the last time. It kind of snaps in there, and then it won't come out. Um, and then it'll be done. Oh, there's one last thing I need to do. I need to blacken the tip of the barrel. Because it'll look like it's been fired. I need black. This is just a pigment. <clears throat> so basically what what normal paint would look like if it never had any thinner in it. And it's called pigment. So I don't want to drip any on here. And so it's basically it's great for doing a exhaust or soot or anything like that, that kind of an effect. blackened tip now we're done that's it I have to go to bed I really enjoyed your stream it's already 12 a.m. it's a bad habit staying up really late <laughs> all right well thanks for the thanks for watching thanks for coming out and thanks for checking out my YouTube also that we're pretty much finished that's gonna be it just clean up my brush here and we're done oh you also followed me on Instagram awesome thank you I really appreciate that thank you so much all right See you later. Have a good night. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, this is where I'm going to end it here, guys. Um, I'm all finished. We're all done. The last thing is literally just a clear coat. To seal everything in and, and make it all uniform and, and everything like that and that's it and so there we have it the uh, the German Panther tank uh, by Meng 135th scale and that's it yeah pretty much right <laughs> so yeah so I want to thank you guys for watching and thanks for coming out and I uh, really appreciate it. If you do head over to my YouTube, just like Vivid there did. Uh, well, I guess Vivid over here. Um, and uh, yeah, check me out there. And if you like this stuff, like my videos, why not hit the like on there and subscribe also. And just like him, you can uh, head over to my Instagram and you can check out uh, still pictures of all their models that I've built. And of course, once this is all dried and done, I will take some pictures of it and I will upload this one also. So. I'm going to leave it here for now, guys. I want to thank you again for watching. Thanks for coming out. 
and uh, yeah that's about it so next is going to be a Gundam build as I always do I do some kind of a normal model and then I do a Gundam and then back to a normal model and a Gundam and that's my routine so next is a Gundam build and uh, yeah so maybe start on that on the weekend we'll see how things go and uh, anyway so I guess that's about it for now and so I guess we'll see you all in the next one <laughs>